This video is sponsored by the National Pork Board. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back, Brandon again. Today I'm partnering up with the National Pork Board to go ham in the kitchen on a cooking video, which is very timely because my most popular video on my channel is a cooking video. It's a breakfast scramble I made several years ago. And one of the main ingredients in that breakfast scramble is pork. And it's timely because I still get comments on this video to this day from people asking what they can switch out the pork for because they want a better source of protein, or they actually make comments and saying, you know, there's no way that this recipe has this much protein per serving, you have to be wrong. And the problem is people just don't realize how good of a protein source that pork can be. And I think a big part of that is because when they hear pork, especially in some cases like breakfast, like that video, they think of things like bacon or sausage or pepperoni, because if you eat pepperoni for breakfast, then good on you. And even though all those things are delicious, they probably don't have the best macros that you're looking for. But those are only some of the cuts of pork or some of the forms of pork. So when you start taking a look at other things like pork loin, pork chop, pork tenderloin, they're actually lean or extremely lean. It's not just me saying that, but also the USDA. So for example, in this video, I'll be cooking pork tenderloin, which is something that I like to cook all the time, because again, it has very good macros. It's very easy to cook. But when you take a look at the per serving, roughly three ounces gives you 22 to 23 grams of protein and three grams of fat or less. So that's around 120 some calories. It's very hard to beat. In fact, you'll be hard pressed to find other meats that can meet that as well. You like what I did there. Now I know some people like to go to other sources like plant-based proteins, which is fine, but it's really tough in order to get the same amount of protein per serving and keep the calories low. So for instance, you could eat six tablespoons of peanut butter, which might sound like a lot of fun and probably tastes pretty delicious, but then you're looking at a ton of fat and probably around 600 calories worth in order to get the same amount of protein that you get just in that three ounces of pork tenderloin. And pork tenderloin is really easy to cook for me, who is not necessarily the best cook. Again, read some of those other comments on that older video, uh, but as long as the center is about 145 degrees, you are good to go. So just using a quick meat thermometer is all it takes. You don't have to worry about what juices are running what and what the color of the meat is. As long as it's 145 degrees or so, you are good to go. So what I'm gonna show you today again is a recipe that I cook all the time with pork tenderloin, quick, easy, delicious, good macros, and really easy to do. So let's go ahead and get to it. So I'm gonna put all the specific amounts of the ingredients that the recipe calls for in the description box, but here I use two and a half pounds of pork tenderloin. There's actually two of them in here, so it worked out really nice because there's plenty of extra. But all the other ingredients are pretty easy ones that you'll find around your kitchen all the time, so you don't have to go out and buy anything special necessarily. So just olive oil, Italian seasoning, garlic powder, cumin, salt, pepper, chili powder, and also some smoked paprika as well. So it's pretty easy to put together. Again, the instructions will be in the description box below, but we're basically making a rub here with all the ingredients I just showed you. From there, we're gonna take a casserole dish, which I've decided to grease up so the meat doesn't stick. I then take a fork and pierce all sides of the tenderloin, so top and bottom. I then take some more olive oil and I drizzle it on the top and bottom of the actual tenderloin itself and brush it in. This is really gonna add flavor and also help the rub that we just created stick a little bit better. So once both sides are coated with olive oil, you take your mixture and you liberally distribute it both on the top and the bottom here. The more the better in my opinion. And again, you can really mix it up and add a whole bunch of flavors. From there, we go to our preheated oven, which should be at 400 degrees, and we pop our tenderloins in. It's gonna take between 25 to 35 minutes, maybe longer, maybe less, depending on what kind of meat you use and what size meat you use, but you know it's done when it hits 145 degrees as I'm showing you right here. From there, the product comes out and I would very highly suggest you let it sit for a couple of minutes as with most meat, but then just slice it into whatever size portions you want and pair it with your favorite side, whether that be a carb, whether that be a vegetable, or just pair it with more pork tenderloin because that sounds awesome as well. So there you go, there's my mouth-watering pork tenderloin, which I'm sure you're all just dying to get your hands on. But don't worry, if you wanna make this or other meals and find out more information about the other cuts of pork out there, you can go ahead and go to pork.org slash cooking. And you know it's a quick and easy meal because number one, I made it. And number two, I made a video on it. And there's a reason why I don't make as many cooking videos anymore, even though they're much requested. They are just very time consuming for the most part. Except when you have something like this where it's literally just a couple ingredients and you throw into the oven and as long as it hits that 145 degree Fahrenheit temperature, you're good to go. So if you go ahead and make this, please let me know. Leave it in the comment section below to let me know what your thoughts are. In the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.